in this video i'll be talking about http trigger and its usage in power automate so i'm just going to pick up say a simple example with regards to http trigger and then show it to you how it all functions within power automate now just to give you a context like i have this power automate flow like uh, i'm in the make.powerautomate.com interface now i'll go into my flows and then i'll click on new flow so just for this example uh, i will say start with instant cloud flow okay now i'll name this as, as http trigger demo march 2025 and i'll select a manually trigger a flow okay now this is just I, I want to show you how to uh, first create a simple flow and then you know we can build on that HTTP trigger now this is the trigger click on new and then I will add one more component called as compose so compose action so select that click on save and your flow is ready now make sure that you put something in compose so I'll just put some text in compose so i have a trigger i have a compose now how do we use an http trigger now the first part which you see over here this is the triggering component now here we, it can be an automated trigger or it can be a manual trigger now automated means if something happens in the dataverse or if something happens or if you receive some message then that gets triggered uh, using either an outlook connector or any third party connector and then the flow gets executed now here someone has to manually click on it now what if i do not want this i'll just remove this so i'll just click on delete and then i can remove that trigger but you cannot have a flow without a trigger so you need to add a trigger so i'll click on add a trigger over here and then from this options over here i have an option to just type http now if i type http i should be able to see different http triggers now one of so you have this section over here http and you have an option over here request okay now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pick up this premium trigger request so if i click on see more there is only one option available so when an http request is received now there are various options which you get to see over here like who can trigger this flow now you have an option like anyone can trigger any user in my tenant or specific user in my tenant now this one is like most preferred if you want only specific users to execute it and that too within your tenant this is uh, i'd say the next best option any user in my tenant so it is still restricted to your tenant but uh, only the user who is part of your tenant will be able to execute this anyone this is i would say quite dangerous like if someone gets hold of that url they can just click in and then uh, person can trigger that flow so these are the options you get over here so let me pick up any so maybe any use anyone i would say okay and then we have something called a http url now url will be generated after save okay so let me save this flow now once i save this flow uh, a url will be generated so if i click over here this url gets generated now the main part of this url is so let me copy this url and show it to you So this is how the url will look like so let me paste this so it has the flow url so it has the workflow so this is that workflow this is the trigger it says trigger manual path invoke and then you have some parameters related to invoke api version uh, and then sp equal to trigger manual run and some garbage value okay so this is that url which will trigger the flow now the purpose of this particular trigger is that you know if you want to run this flow it is not a manual process it is not work on if there are any changes within the dataverse but then if you 
just type in that URL in the browser. So let me copy this URL. That flow will get executed. So just to demonstrate, if I go back just to see the flow run, now the flow has not yet run over here. Okay, and there's no way to run this flow apart from just type in this URL and pressing enter. Now it says the HTTP method for this request is not valid, expected post and actual get. So if I click on edit over here, go to manual over here, do we have an options to set? So if I click on show all, there is an option for method. So I have an option to either select a get method or a post method. So let me select a get method for time being, click on save over here and go back and now we will go here and then we will again run this url now nothing happens you go over here just refresh and then you should see this flow has run similarly if i want to run this flow again let me copy this url again go into the new tab press enter and then this flow will be run so this opens a plethora of option for us. So what can happen is like if I have this application, so if I have this airline application, now if it's a model driven application, I can write a custom command. So if you navigate to one of the record over here, I can create a button using say maybe ribbon workbench, and then I will say on click of it, navigate to a URL. Now, once you navigate to that URL, that URL is nothing but this. So you are technically demand, like say, invoking that flow on demand. So I will try to cover that in an, another video, but just to understand the concept behind the trigger. So we have created a trigger and then that trigger has executed successfully uh, just by on the click of the URL. And then uh, we have uh, these things. So we have manual and we have compose. So if I click on this option over here, it has some output. So if you go into the show raw output, there are some outputs which you can see is a header output. So you see this headers, right? Now, what are the other things we can expect from this trigger output? So uh, let me edit this flow again and go into the compose. And if I remove this value, Go into this dynamic content and see I can get body, I can get headers, I can get headers, I can get queries. Okay. So let me pick up say body headers and queries. So I'll select body over here, I'll select headers, I'll select queries. And there are a couple of headers. So let me pick this as headers, say headers two, and then select this as well. Save. Go back. Just press this, just type in this URL and press enter. And then this flow should run. And then let's inspect what output it generates. So if I go to compose over here, I can see that it has generated couple of things over here so let me just scroll over here to show you so body the body does not contain anything but in the headers you have accept accept language cookie and all those things and in the headers too you don't have anything and even in the queries you do not have anything okay so you can't capture the header component uh, while executing this flow okay so over here, if I go into manual, now I have an option to specify the body JSON schema, or maybe I can use sample payload to generate the schema. So if the enter or paste is sample JSON payload. So if you have your own format, then you can type over here. So if I have a format, say name colon, uh, say something, Girish, and maybe I have name colon Girish, comma, age colon, say 30. If say, let's assume this is my format and let me put this in a double quotes. So name 
h and this is a json click on done and then it will automatically take that body value see now it has taken the json over here and now you can pass any json okay so it can be your any data type and then you can pass through that http uh, request so in this way you can pass this information now that's about properties okay now what about query string now the url so let me save this first and let me execute this again and go back after we add the schema let's see what happens does it show anything in the body so if you see here it hasn't shown anything in the body however we have provided that schema so now what happens if you hit this url with a postman and pass the body alongside it it will give you that output in your http trigger execution similarly in the url now if you see this long url and if i go to the end of this and if i just say ampersand and i will say name equal to say john if i just type in this ampersand name equal to john and press enter then this flow should run so it has run three seconds ago and if you click on the output over here and if you just scroll down now you can see that name has come so we have an option now to even pass a query string uh, so what happens with this is like it opens an another area of opportunity whereby you can make this content dynamic so remember in this example which i mentioned to you that we can have a button over here and once click of this button that flow will run now on click of a button if you append the query string of the say id so i'll pass this id so then technically what we are doing is we are getting this identifier passing on to the flow flow knows that is coming from this record and it can process some information so you have made that contextual and then with that context you are executing some uh, business process so there are different ways different logic which you can utilize to basically run this http trigger so that's it folks this is this was just a high level introduction to how to create a http trigger uh, and then get that url generated and then from that point onwards you can start uh, sending out signals and pass on the body or pass on the query string so that you can make the flow dynamic and then suit as per your business requirement so there is a possibility within that microsoft flow if you do not have a custom connector uh, or if you do not have like inbuilt connector within power automate you can create your own custom uh, solution and then you can uh, trigger it on demand using say maybe a custom command or custom uh, command smart button using a ribbon workbench so that's it folks thanks for watching